What's up you guys, welcome to a brand new video and today I'm going to be showing you guys different types of jump scares and cool mechanics you can use in your Fortnite horror maps. Now I know October is just around the corner which means Fortnite are going to be featuring a bunch of different horror maps. So if you're planning on creating a horror map, hopefully this video can help you improve your map just a little bit more. But before we get into this guys, if you are new to the channel, do remember to like, subscribe, turn post notifications on, comment down below and let's get straight into this. Now before I explain how to create each and every one of these jump scares and cool mechanics I'm going to quickly demonstrate how they work and how you can use them for your Fortnite horror maps. Right, so the first jump scare we have is the air vents. Now for the air vents, you're obviously gonna have it behind a wall. You're gonna have it angled just like this. And for the settings, you're gonna have enable during phase on none. You're gonna have gust range on 15 and you're obviously gonna have it activated on a certain trigger. So I've got mine on channel six and then you're gonna have a trigger next to the wall. Again, that's my trigger channel six. And for the second method I showed earlier on my video, you can have the exact same settings just to quickly show you of course it's going to be activated on a different channel now the only different thing here is the trick tower like i previously shown you guys in my video so these are the settings for it you guys want to copy each and every one of these settings again for the channels that's going to be completely up to you so i have reset when receiving from channel 8 and then enable player content when receiving from channel 7 and then behind this wall you're going to have another trigger so for example i've got channel 8 and once you hit that trigger the wall will be back up Right, so for the second jump scale, we have two identical rooms. You guys don't have to do it like this, but I find it better when it's like this. So it makes it look like the player's never left the room. Now you're gonna want a channel or a rift teleporter to teleport a player. So I've got a channel. So once a player triggers channel five, they will then get teleported. And these are the settings you want on your rift. Now, if you're not using a channel, you don't have to worry about this, but you are gonna wanna have face player in teleporter direction, yes conserve momentum yes and then play sound effects visual effects and riff visibility on off you're then going to want an explosive behind the gargoyle if you are going to use it and you want to have copy all these settings now if you're not using a gargoyle and you're using something else for the jump scare just make sure you figure out the hp and then change the explosive damage on the explosive now moving on to the third jump scare which is probably the easiest jump scares you guys can create we got the explosive jump scare now you don't need to use a trigger and if you're not using a trigger all you want to change on the explosive uh, device settings is the explode on proximity range now if you are using a trigger i like using a trigger so i can time it perfectly you want to copy these exact settings and the only thing you are going to actually change is the channel again that's going to be up to you whatever channel you want the explosive device to explode on and once you've done that you've literally got your explosive jump scare moving on to the fourth jump scare we got the creepy doors and this is where the doors just open and close by themselves now i've got a trigger here that's going to activate a music sequencer and when this music sequencer is activated it will trigger two devices one will open the door while the other one will close the door now the mechanic to this one is a bit more complicated guys but it is pretty easy you're also going to want a device lock now for the device lock you're going to want to copy these settings down and the only thing you're going to want to change is the open when receiving from channel one and close when receiving from channel two and just to show you guys 
I do have this on all my other settings and the channels again that's going to be to your preference now for the music sequence side if you guys do want to copy the exact way I've done it then these are the settings for it and you can tweak it if you want you can make the tempo a bit faster or a bit slower and you're obviously going to change the start sequence when receiving from now the trigger is going to be between these two tiles if you're going to copy the way I've done it and for the last tile it's going to be bang in the middle and then you've got your creepy doors Moving on to the fifth jump scare, we have more explosive jump scares, but this is going to make props look like they're disappearing or breaking out of thin air. Pretty much like the goggle you one I previously showed you guys in this video, you're going to have an explosive device and the settings are going to be pretty much the exact same. The only thing different here is the proximity delay, which is on none this time, and the structure damage. You want to make sure you guys figure out the props HP before changing the structure damage. So for example, I think this one's 120, so I'm using 150 structure damage. For our second method, I am using a trigger device to actually explode the explosive devices. So again, the only thing you're gonna change on these explosive devices settings is proximity range on none and explode when receiving from a specific channel. Now again, you're also gonna to wanna to change the structure damage depending on the prop. Over here, pretty simple guys, we have another device and once I step on this device, the door's gonna open and this is the settings I use for the lock device. You're gonna have the door closed and then open when receiving from a channel. And again, which is pretty much the exact same, initial door open and then close when receiving from channel 11, that simple. Now for our final creepy mechanic, we have lights out, which is definitely one of my favorite mechanics to use in a horror map. And this is where a player's flashlight will turn off and cannot be turned back on. Now, this does require a few devices and the first device we're gonna use is a mutator zone. Now you wanna place this in the center of your area and you wanna make sure you change the width, depth and height to your preference. So for example, I have this whole area covered and you're gonna do the same for your area. Now once a player enters this zone, the flashlight is going to turn off and cannot be turned back on until they leave this area. So again, copy these settings, but the most importantly, you want to make sure that this device is disabled during game phase. And you want to make sure that you have a specific channel that enables this device. So for example, I've got enable when received from channel 15, and I also have my trigger device here on 15. Second device you're going to use is a class selector. Now you can find the class selector over here. And once you've got your class selector, you want to copy these exact settings down. And again, class to switch to is going to be your preference. And you want to also make sure that time to switch is instant. And also that um, respawn on switch is on no. And clear items on switch, all items. Second, you also want to make sure that change players to class when receiving from the same channel you use for your mutator zone. Now you're going to need the final device, which is called a class designer. And you don't really have to change much, but these are the settings I'm using. So again, class identifier has to be the same class selector as the other device we just used. So again, class one. And you also want to throw in a flashlight. Now what this does is the flashlight that the player has at the start will then get cleared. And this one will replace it, but it will be turned off. And they will not be able to turn it on because of the mutator zone. Once you've done that, you should be good to go. You can go through all these settings and change it if you want. The only thing I changed here was the player speed. So again, once they enter this area, this will be disabled, but once they trigger this device, it will turn on the mutator zone. They will get a brand new flashlight, but it will be turned off. But that's it for today's video, guys. Hopefully some of these mechanics and jump scares can help improve your horror map just a little bit more. And I'm also gonna be linking down a video down in the description below in case some of you guys wanna know how to build a map in first person. But as always, if you guys are new to the channel, do remember to like, subscribe, turn post notifications on, comment down below, and I'll see you guys next time.